Welcome everyone. This is Jenkins User Experience Special Interest Group. It's the 20th of July, uh, 2022. Thanks very much for being here. Reminder that we abide by the Jenkins Code of Conduct, conduct in our meetings. Topics proposed for the agenda today, security reviews for pull requests and Vodak, I believe this is you. Then UX improvements and Daniel added a new one, a subtopic there, UX paradigms. I had require Java 11 and fully support Java 17. And this one on stalled UX pull requests had been added. I'm not sure if there's anything to say other than that I haven't done that action. We had an accessibility assessment that I've made no progress on as well. Are there other topics that you would like to put on the agenda before we start going through the agenda? Okay, Vadek, then let's take on security reviews for UX pull requests. So I think it was not my topic. It was added by Tim last time, I think because we wanted to review that after one more for this kind of thing. What is the status? Like, are we blocking too many pull requests with for good reason? Are we able to allocate the correct resources, this kind of thing? So I would say from my side, I would like more to get feedback from the community there. Like, are we blocking too much the thing? Are we sufficiently reactive or not? This kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, it's at least one that's been waiting for a month and hasn't been looked at um, from security team. Um, the symbol change or which do you mean? Yeah. Yep. So I definitely plan to do that. Uh, just haven't gotten around to it yet. Um, yeah, it's another one. Just seeing when the label was added. Yeah, nearly two weeks for the colored node labels. It's been waiting. Right, but there's an ongoing discussion exactly how that one would work. And if the PR requires substantial rework, um, I'm not sure it makes a lot of sense to review it now for um, how safe it is. Like, for example, the last comments I remember is whether there's a selection of colors or whether it's completely free form. And if there's a selection of colors, there's probably not going to be a text field where users can enter whatever, right? Sure. I still, I think, um, I think I did raise on the mailing list about having some sort of label for some sort of review, review done and not um, and needs addressing like this one here said the potential CSS injection issue, but there's no way to tell whether this is pending a security review or not. I, don't know. I mean, from my point of view, generally it's okay, but some of them seem to wait a little bit longer than they should have. Um, but it's generally going okay. So Tim, I, I'm not sure. I, I was trying to capture the notes on the label idea that you had, and I missed that. Could you do that one? Say that one again. So if there's an issue with the pull request and it needs a correction, there's no basically. So the tippy one, there's some work that needs to be done on it to add some more tests or fix some tests. Um, it's, it's not waiting for the security team right now, but it says needs security review. And basically there's only a needs review and review and review approved label. There's no. Okay. All right. So, it, no, so no we needs. need, need, a, need a, a label that says security fix pending or security fix needed. Possibly. Okay. If we if we want to continue this process, I'm not sure how it's working for the security team, whether they have and how long they will have the people to keep reviewing all these PRs and whether it's been well, official. I, say, I will say you. it's until we are no longer finding vulnerabilities in pull requests for such things, because it was really recently we discovered a lot of things related to the new UI stuff we are working on in terms of pull requests. In the past, we got close to no new vulnerability added. So it's really, it 
to be a more stable in terms of the situation. The cost to correct something during a pull request compared to once it's already merged is so huge that we can just let the things moving on there. Now, if we are reducing the number of things that we are finding, I'm totally fine to reduce completely this kind of uh, policy for the, the review. The goal is really to keep us doing an efficient amount of uh, time working on the security aspect for core, to not just waste time because we were not able to audit the thing before the release. Yeah, so, so Vadek, I think that was an important point from my mind is, is you're doing it, like it's cheaper for the security team to find the issues before the PR is merged. So reviews are a really good thing for you. That's a positive for your team, not, not anything you consider as, oh, a, a, just a cost. It's really a benefit. You're avoiding, avoiding later work by doing earlier work. In the ideal world, I would say there will be no new security fixes. So we have nothing to review and nothing to correct. But as it's not really the case. Yeah. All right. So, so then is the, the message I think I'm hearing is we're happy to continue the process. And should we keep this as a regular item on the agenda just to be sure so that we can look at these things saying, hey, if something's been a long while, uh, I could certainly prepare. I didn't prepare for today. I could prepare lists of things that have been there for a while. Uh, if that if that helps yeah that could be very nice i think we need to keep the, the point every time to discuss that to check the, the temperature what is the situation and so on because if at some point we are not able to continue that effort from security team i don't want us to block everything from the community side. it's more about that kind of thing great all right so tim does that work for you i'll just include it on the agenda regularly and we'll we'll raise it in another check in another month to see how we're doing yeah great all right so a quick remark uh regarding uh the reviews so i checked and uh, of course acknowledging that it's typically the simpler pull requests that get reviewed uh quicker mm -hmm. we have three that need a review and 30 that had a review ah okay good so three need review, 30 have been reviewed since we started this. And uh, are approved, yes. Good, all right. Thanks, okay. Anything else on security re reviews? Okay, next topic then. We've had a general placeholder UX improvements for Jan and Tim. Uh, Daniel's put this one un, as a subtopic. Daniel, should we take that one first? UX paradigms? And then Tim, if there are, if there are things you want to discuss in terms of other UX things, we would, we would then give it to you. Is that okay with you, Tim? Yeah. Okay. Uh, this is... Basically, a repeat what I wrote in one of the one of recent uh, pull request reviews. Uh, let me pull it up. Um, so what I noticed is that it seems we kind of introduce completely new UI elements in otherwise unrelated. Uh, changes without considering how that impacts the larger plugin ecosystem, for example. Um, so uh, in that particular case, we have the new job configuration form that is integrated in Jenkins 2360. That is the only page in Jenkins where the page title is on the side panel rather than the main panel. And uh, there's a new pull request that changes uh, some stuff around in the plugin manager where that was also done. So my question was, is this a new thing? And Jan's response to that was, yes, long-term all pages should move the page title to the side panel. And for don't some, it wasn't quite that. I don't believe. Um, hold on. Cool. 
I'm not suggesting a move to titles above side panels just yet, as there's still lots of uh, thinking, planning, designing ahead to make the move make sense. Um, although uh, in the first response was end goal, I think there would have to be the side header above the side panel if the page has one. Just right now, a lot of pages haven't been looked at. Um, and especially that first response for me means the expectation is that every view in every plugin would need updating to move the title. And while that's certainly something we can discuss, I don't think having it be part of other changes in this case uh, moving the scrolls by tabs to the side panel the first pr or the um, tabs of the plugin manager into the side panel was uh, appropriate for that especially since it essentially means we either have more inconsistency across jenkins or need to adapt hundreds of plugins probably especially in ways that are um, potentially not easily done with how we use side panels because we reuse side panels for multiple pages and that uh, probably isn't quite possible with this i haven't looked at the implementation specifically and the other is uh, the pull request to plugin manager introduced a separator in the side panel which makes sense it it's nice to look at but then the question is it doesn't show up for example in context menus that uh because there is no support for separators in context menus so it's it feels half baked and i'd rather not have a change than have a change that doesn't work with the rest of Jenkins. And uh, while these changes individually are something we can discuss, having them sneak in in another pull request that changes something mostly unrelated to me uh, should not be done. So I'm struggling to understand. So the, the plugin manager moving the title into the side panel seems like that was that was quite intentional not a not a total shift of everything else daniel can you help me understand better or maybe i should open up the side panel the the plugin manager pull request to see the picture of the the ui that seems like that could be isolated and that one panel switches its title location others keep it the same as they are or is that your concern that should they we should have them all on side panel or all at the top right so the problem is it's an un, it went unmentioned as a change uh, in a pull request that changed something else about the plugin manager largely something else um and when i asked well is this the new thing because it was the second time i saw it uh jan's initial response was yeah long term everything should be changed and to me a one-off change in an otherwise unrelated core pull request is not where we should set project-wide standards for all views that have a lot of downstream work attached to them. And so my pro proposal in that pull request was, well, um, have something chip like so that these changes that affect many developers in the ecosystem uh, can be reviewed and discussed in advance rather than say you know a few weeks down the road hey this exists now so time to use it which is kind of how i feel about the um, app bar Um, so, Tim, any insights from you there? Any guidance you want to offer? I'm 
like we have differing opinions and I think uh, I'm not sure how productive it is without Jan here as well to give reasoning. Okay. So is this one where we bring the discussion and the differences of opinions into the pull request? I think it's being discussed there currently. Okay. Um, Jan, so Jan, Jan replied to Daniel's concerns um, two days ago. And Could the link be shared to that pull request? It's in the chat. Ah, yes. Here, I'll just pop it open. And make it big enough to read. Okay. Right. So this is the before case and this is the after case. Right. So Daniel, I think the, the topic for you was the word plugin manager at the top sort of left there be, moves into the sidebar so that the search is the topmost focus in plugin manager. Do we use that framework anywhere else on any other sidebar in Jenkins? I don't believe so. There is yeah, so I mentioned one other pull request where that was done. It's in the latest weekly release of Jenkins in the job configuration form. The job config is it on weekly CI already, Mark? Uh, it may be. Yeah, let's look. It will be. Yeah. Uh, if yeah, we're at three hundred and sixty. So if I do, right. if no, I job do job configuration. Yeah. So let's just open this job it's and clear. configure it. Good, I love, okay, so here the word configuration is in the side panel, right? And Right, so this was the I first like one. There are pretty major changes to be doing piecemeal. Well, it's the only way to do that sort of thing. Right. So it's, I mean, not, not quite yeah. as piecemeal. We can do something like core, for example. Well, then it should be like planned with a planned and scheduled then no because otherwise won't there be some that use the sidebar for the title page title some that don't but which which is kind of my point really yeah. and especially since this is something that if it's something that should be done jenkins wide it needs first of all it needs feasibility review by others who may think of some uh, issues that uh and <clears throat> perhaps hasn't considered by just changing one individual view and then it should be done uh you know just planned and you know core at a time more or less mm -hmm. because that may well reveal issues in implementation mm -hmm. um, that are going to be a problem and if we already changed half the application and only notice it then that would be a problem do we um we have um, tools underway for translations, right? Where we, page titles may appear in in different languages? Yes, yes. Tell me what your question is. That title in German would wrap like you have a very limited space for what could potentially in different languages be. I, I object. I object. You change the C to a K and it's German. <laughs> for I once in our... because I, I for a previous project that used to blow up our like <laughs> i'm just saying like it's a very limited amount of space and i'd be curious to see how it scales for i'm oh, assuming but... not all of our page titles will be as concise as configuration right so the, i mean the has plugin manager been... already was shortened to plugins right yeah so there hasn't been a request now to change all of them it's to kind of experiment with a couple of the pages where this makes sense, where they're quite self-contained and specifically not plugins. But I don't like, I mean, Jan's not here, so I don't really want, like, I don't know the exact reasoning or anything. So, um, Which, I mean. How does it, sorry, this may be a, a silly question, but how does the open source community kind of A-B test them, this stuff among yourselves? Like, do you ever share things with like a limited group of people, like soliciting feedback or, do you put it out there until someone complains? And if there's enough complaints, then it's something that's evaluated. Like, is there a formal? So usually the review is is done in the pull request before we merge. So that's where the the comparisons are done. There's not any 
a B testing of, of users after merge. So, so I'm, I'm sorry, I'm still trying to catch up here. So Tim, I think your, your note was this, this configuration form is relatively specific. It's configuring a, the job and, and with that specific configuration form, it's a it's an intentional exploration. Could we do more of this? Move the title of the side panel, but it's not a requirement that we must. So is, is part of, part of this piece of work is looking at improving the side panels for pages, reducing what's on there, and simplifying it. So not so not just dumping a side panel with twenty actions on it, which is what like you often get. So if you go to like a dashboard on maybe maybe ci.jenkins.io, but prob yeah. probably more like someone who's got a million plugins is um, well actually ci.jenkins.io is a great one because at least for me the side the side panel is enormous yeah and that's not a very big one you'll <laughs> so you can, yeah i mean yeah that one's pretty crazy but um i'm more thinking like the dashboard just how sort of crazy actions get there and everyone puts a link there it's more about looking at places that we can improve this and so it's like targeted a couple of areas first. So there's like the navigation here and plugin manager. So there's some, there's been some work done to do things like get rid of those back to dashboard links all over the place and some guidance being put out that those shouldn't be in there. So there's a draft pull request on the design like design system or whatever it's called. Um, that gave a guidance that those, so you shouldn't include back to dashboard links as people should be navigating via the breadcrumbs um and i think there's a sim similar similar back buttons basically and there's, there's more buttons sometimes, sometimes there's two buttons for navigation and it's about when the different layouts should be used and i, I don't think we should be trying to do it all at all at once um and we, we definitely don't have the resources to do it all at once or do the a b testing and not. Yeah, and that, that's my, I, I think I've, I'm aligned with Tim's concern there that I, I like the incremental approach. Daniel, do you have any, any suggestions of, okay, this one was, was a change that you're worried will affect, could affect many plugins in many ways if we do it more broadly, right? Is, I think that was your concern is that the side panel is used in many different ways, not just this context. So this particular change, so this is the one that's already live, and I had right. no problem with that because this side panel works differently from all others for a reason, right? It's the navigation inside the current page, whereas other side panels go to different pages. Ah. So this is already different. And previously the side panel in the config form was just empty. So for this page, it is different so making it more different wasn't really much of a problem. Um, I really noticed it only when it was done for the plugin manager, which has the classic navigation between different pages uh, where it was also added. And to me... Um, so the plugin manager's it, side panel is useless at the moment, though. So it's got the two buttons that it's not supposed to have. It's got a back to dashboard button and a manage Jenkins button. Right, yeah, right, right, right. But, but otherwise, it is a side panel like any other in Jenkins, where it navigates to pages. And in that, it is different from the job configuration, where that's not the case. And so I spoke up only in the plugin manager pull request because I noticed it. And so would, it, would it make any difference if we did a PR to remove it and then do a separate PR to re edit? Because, like, that, the side panel right near is an absolutely useless one that's doing nothing. Look, Tim, I don't object to the movement of the of the table tabs into the side panel. That's not what this is about. That's a fine change. And I say so in my review. The title in the side panel is the problem because it is a side panel like any other. And so that means we introduce a new way to have page titles in Jenkins um, in a mostly unrelated pull request. And the same with the separator. 
for example, the separator, I would expect there to be support to have separators show up in context menus, and there isn't. It's just an HR. And and so the I think there, from a the... UX perspective, a title and a sidebar is so problematic. I mean, this feels like a major change that. But so, Christina, can can you help me with that one? I I was feeling like this change, for instance, is a net net significant net improvement. For me, this this one I think feels in great. certain use cases, you're going to find it's fine. Uh, but I think it's going to be impossible for to predict how that would scale across different scenarios. And to only have page titles on the sidebar in some cases and not in all, like from a UX perspective, that's as a fun, simple example. Sorry, you were saying? No, no, go ahead. So one fun example is basically the main page of any job that has in the title something like freestyle project hello world or something so <laughs> could you could you access that mm -hmm. Pipe, pipeline hello world right and especially as soon as you use multi-branch pipelines or um organization folders like we have on ci jenkins io that string becomes pretty long pretty quickly and then you try to cram it into the side panel now would job pages be exempt from having their title in the side panel uh, to prevent that problem? Maybe that's an approach, but it seems like this needs more planning than whatever is the next page that we're working on and doing it there. The solution may very well be that they belong in the side panel. It just seems like it needs more investigation. But that's just my two cents. Right. The so then say in context of this page, would the first link that appears on the page be recent changes? Like the pull request was kind of the ideal thing, right? You want to feature search, search is prominent at the top, it works in that context. That's not going to be the case for every plugin, right? Where the first thing at the top of the page, like in this case, recent changes. Oh, you're referring to this one. You okay, know, you weren't referring to sidebar. Like suddenly, the suddenly everything below the title for every every plugin that receives this treatment that now becomes, you know, the first thing that they they see on the page. I don't know. Is that desired? I'm a, I'm a, I'm I don't afraid think I'm, that I'm, the, hmm? I'm, I'm not sorry. saying that the sidebar isn't the right solution. I just think there's going to be weird little, like that would seem strange to me to arrive on a page and just see a plain text link as my first, without it, without any context. Because if I saw a title over the sidebar, I would equate it to the sidebar links versus the page content I'm on. Do you know? I'm 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 pretty sure I'm not following still, yeah. Christina. Sorry. Let me get us to a, to a page where I th I think can highlight what you're what I think you're trying to say, and then you can tell me no, Mark, you've misunderstood. So, so here the configure page has the word configuration on it, and this and it then goes navigates. Right to, so in the right panel, conf uh -huh. general is right there. It has its own subheader. Things have context. They make sense because it that content in particular sits so okay with the title removed. Mm -hmm. Would all pages feel like that? Or will you have some where it goes right into kind of a, a list of links or a list of, I don't know what the possible scenarios would be. Would it still read right in that context or would it seem really awkward and disjointed? I don't think it's something we're going to solve on this call. I'm just okay. saying like, I, I would recommend looking up some edge cases, mocking it up and seeing if it still sits as well with some obscenely long titles. <laughs> okay, so so I think I think to it hasn't, to, been, it hasn't been proposed to, to move it on any other page. So right. I mean, but yes. and again, again Jan's not here, so I'd rather I'd, right, yeah, I think Jan can take a look at the recording and 
see if he still wants to try and move that there or do whatever. Yeah. So the so Daniel, I think your point was this one, the job name on on the, the page for a job is potentially very, very long. I know I've got several like that. So so that part I think I understood. It's this this text wouldn't in the general case fit on the sidebar, but Jan certainly hasn't proposed to do that. It's just that we don't have a pull request for it. Go ahead, another, Christina. Another question is, I assume the ad description sits on, if there were a description added, it would sit under the title, correct? Uh, yes, it would, uh, description goes here. So would, would description persist at the top of the right panel or would it also move to the sidebar? So it, when I save it, it will appear right over here. So if I had a paragraph of like a short paragraph of copy there, because I don't think there's a character limit, right? No, there is not. There, there is not. Yeah. So, but so I mean, that, that... Like not knowing how our, how your customers may use it, there may be situations where they may have quite a bit of quite verbose descriptions. Does that now move the links down the page? Like, not saying it's not a potential solution, but that there's. It's, it's easy to look at like one ideal page where it works well, but there may be pages, like depending on how someone is using it, that may not work because then if you move pipeline hello world over to the left nav, what about your ad description button on the right? Does that just continue to float there? And then this link on your right panel adds text to the left nav, like it kind of creates this disjointed experience but I'm not going to solve it today just right. and, and just to be clear i i do not object to doing this right i just think i expect there to be problems like we discussed if, if just now back, oh. and it needs more planning in a way right so first of all it needs to show that pages like this one would handle it if the idea is to roll it out widely on most or all views and perhaps define standards like for example in this case if the pipeline hello world moves to the left then the first thing shown on the page needs to have an extra title added in this case you would have a, a title that just says description for example right so basically ux guidelines how this should be implemented so that it looks uh, reasonable and, and works reasonably well and so seeing changes like this in prs that do something different for me is a huge problem that's it it may be what you move towards it just needs to have issues ironed out Okay, so yeah, so I just I just wanted to bring this topic up uh, in this group, um, so everyone on the SIG is aware that there is a discussion going on, and I think, as far as I'm concerned, we can move on. Okay, great. Well, and I I I think I've understood. So there are there are specific cases, and Daniel, no objections to this one that's already merged, for instance. It's 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 a good. This is a good positive change, a good improvement. And Christina, your UX observation was hey this actually matches well with a person a, a user's experience because of this word general here associating there that, mm -hmm. that makes sense in some cases yeah it will flow like that and it will sit fine and then that page you don't have the option to add a description right okay good and a description would always sit with a title wouldn't it <laughs> maybe not <laughs> but it's, it's a question that it would need to be answered okay great thanks any objections if we continue onward then? Nope. nope. Okay, good. All right. So Tim, anything else that you wanted to bring in terms of, of UX improvement topics or things where, are there other topics that are on the list? Um, I was gonna show a developer improvement um, thing for the Jenkins CI org, um, something I've been working on. Um, it's called um, uh, GitHub Comment Ops. Um, okay. So let me send a link. Uh, well, or do so, you want to just share your screen? 
Oh, can do, can do. Um, uh, you, you tell me what you prefer. I am happy to share my screen, not, not the least bit shy. Yeah, I can share my screen. Let me find Chrome. Think that one. Uh, so you should be able to see um, my GitHub window with GitHub comment ops. Mm -hmm. Cool. So, I mean, it's something that's been a bit of a pain for quite a while is that um, there's issues for people who don't have access to um, the repo directly that they can't do things like they can't um, request reviews from people if they're not, if they don't have um, right access to the repo or triage, which is very uncommon. Um, and so especially for individual contributors and often yeah, people don't get the notifications or they dismiss it and they don't come back to it. Um, but other issues like um, having to rely on triages to come along and label issues and pull requests. Um, so GitHub issue templates mitigate that a bit by allowing you to set the sets and labels through templates. Um, but then um, basically we rely, rely on contributors triaging rather than the person issuing it may be able to triage it at the time to save, save some effort. Um, so in Jira, we have this like free for all, anyone can do anything sort of thing, uh, basically anything. Um, and I was just trying to build something that brings what we want back or brings it, some of it to GitHub um, to make it easier to work with and improve the developer experience. Um, so I built a tool that um, handles a few commands and I'll just show you some of the commands and then um, maybe a bit of how it's built and do it just and I'll show you um, like what you can do with it and how quick how it works and stuff. Um, so I guess these are the commands that I built. Um, close, label, remove label, reopen, uh, reviewer, um, and transfer. So that's a common issue is, well, it's not common. We don't, it doesn't happen too much, but we do have quite a lot of repos on GitHub now. Um, generally, they don't need transferring too much, but um, you'd need to have, I think, at least write, if not admin access on both sides to transfer an issue. So you, it might be right on both sides, but basically you need to be the owner of both repos um, to, to move it to a different place. Um, so it's not ideal and there's no way to change that in the GitHub permission settings. Um, so yeah, basically um, there's some comment ops where you can go along and move things around. So if I um, go to my org, um, just random, repo I have here. Um, so an example here. Um, so if I want to remove label bug dependencies, uh, good first issue. Uh, and then the bots, so the bots just edit, just remove them all. And I just want to say slash label um, good first issue and maybe enhancement now with a typo sorry now do it with a typo sorry what about did you say title so, or typo typo so make a make a an intentional typing error yeah sure uh, uh this bob does fred not this exactly. does not exist yeah. Cool. Nice. Um, okay. So what you've yeah. done is effectively granted them the ability to add and remove labels, but or to add to label and unlabel, but not to define a new label. Yeah. So if I go, yeah, exactly. So that was the annoying thing with the GitHub action that I tried first um, that I popped in some of that Jira GitHub stuff is that the GitHub action would just create labels whenever people um, did that and I wasn't a huge fan of that. Um, so, and I could also do slash close not planned as well. So you can um, do the other close option. Um, and then, so that's an issue. Um, so I could transfer it to a different repo. Uh, 
this one here, sure. Oops, that probably won't work. <laughs> and I don't think I had any nice feedback on that one. Let's try that one. Um, this one's a bit slow. The API is not very good for it. it like it's, it, everything just gets a bit funny. I think it's a bit weird on the GitHub side how they've implemented it. And you get a bit of lag time while it's transferring and sometimes it will show up immediately and sometimes it doesn't. It's just how the GitHub API, well, just how this whole feature works. Sometimes it takes a few minutes to even show up that it's moved. Um, but see, it has moved. I'm in the new place now. Um, so that's that. And then the other thing is pull requests. So um, um, Jesse asked, like, what happens if you try and close a pull request as someone with no permissions? Like, if you're going to go spam stuff, it doesn't do anything. So you can't you can't close a pull request. It currently, just ignores you. Well, it throws an error, but. Um, but you can do things that you would like to do as a do, like you can label um, this as a bug and a dependencies. Oh, it's already got dependencies. I can remove label dependencies and label as probably quicker than you can click through the GitHub UI as well. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, let's see what else is there if you just want to see. There's close, label, remove label, reopen, reviewer, transfer. So that's all of them. Um, it's based off of a, um, it's using the OctoKit um, um, web, webhooks um, library. Um, so it's got a GitHub app. Um, Um, so yeah, so just a GitHub app, it's installed on, I think so I've installed it on my personal account and my, and my org, um, it has a webhook secret, which is mandatory with the library. So you have to verify requests. So you don't have to worry about, um, people trying to send you requests because you've got a secret, um, that is the HMAC of the body. Um, so the secrets, they, they said they had a header. Um, to the request they send you with an HMAC of the body, which you need to compare um, with, with the secret. So it's a, it's a shared secret that you enter here and store um, locally. Um, and then your private key, which is used for interacting back with GitHub. Um, it's multi-tenanted, so it uses the um, events. So, so if I go here, you get the recent deliveries. And something I didn't know before doing that is that things like um, the installation ID is passed here. So you don't need to try, you don't need to say that this is a Jenkins CI app or org or anything. So the, so the event tells you which org it's actually working with um, and which installation ID you need to use to get, to get a token. Um, so you can use things like this, or if you're working with a GraphQL API of this, um, and you can get all the information you out completely statelessly. Um, so you could install this on as many orgs as you wanted and you don't need any configuration. It's completely zero configuration. Um, so the only, if you go back here, um, there's only three values you need to provide, app ID, private key, and a webhook secret. Um, and you can pretty, you can easily just, so it's just running on my laptop at the moment. Um, it's a bunch of, um, bunch of rejects currently. Um, I plan to do a little bit of refactoring on to extract it, extract it and test a bit more. Um, so that uh, means I can post one comment with like five commands and take care of the entire thing. Add reviewers, add labels, remove the wrong label. Uh, not currently, but sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So, so what you're Sorry saying about that. <laughs> one, one comment at a time. So, or one command per comment is the current implementation. Uh, yes, it returns currently. As soon as it finds a, as soon as it finds a match, it it backs out. Uh, uh, so is this um. 
So the plan is to apply this to select repos in Jenkins CI, or how would that work? I was thinking to apply it to all of Jenkins CI and possibly Jenkins Infra. Um, so that you don't. So Jenkins CI, it's most. So it's to allow both. So, so any pull request, anyone can request reviewers without needing to have access. Um, it doesn't. So the only thing that doesn't work is um, Teams if they don't have um, write act, if they don't have read access, um, it doesn't work unfortunately. Um, so if I go to this pull request and if I go slash reviewer at timj dash org slash core developers, that will work. Um, but if I go slash reviewer at timj dash org slash Azure Key Vault plugin developers, um, that will silently fail. Just GitHub does an error if they don't have access. You just can't add them. So it returns a 200 happily. They could possibly check and see whether it got added or something, but that one silently fails. Um, but yeah, so this allows you to request the team that owns the repo to review it when you don't have access. And if you're just adding it to select repos, you don't really get the benefit. Um, and it doesn't have to be on Jenkins Infra, it's just a suggestion. Um, those Jenkins Infra repos are reviewed a bit closer, but, gen but there are still plenty of repos which are abandoned and PRs, people come chasing PRs four or five months later because no one was watching the repo. Right. Um, yeah, so the, the thing with the reviewers definitely makes sense um, that GitHub doesn't allow it is really weird. Um, I'm less sure about, you know, labels, for example, because um, if people just go not supplying every label to a thing or, you know, just well-meaning but doing it wrong, which I've seen on some of my repos, then yeah, but uh, yeah, it still looks looks pretty cool. But see, for me, I think the risk of mislabeling is less than the value, much less than the value I get from having them at least propose a label. As a maintainer, I was gonna have to visit the labels anyway, if they, since as a submitter, they couldn't have assigned them, isn't it, it, it seems like it's no worse for me to have them propose the wrong label than what I would have received previously, which was no labels. Yeah, in the past, you only looked at every pull request once. Now you need to look at every pull request every day because it can be done whenever. I see, I see. So your point is it, it would allow adjustments of labels if they were, if they were feeling malicious or, or I mean, feeling or, like they were or, adding value and, and not really. I mean, they, they can be meaning to be helpful, but don't understand how you use labels and it's suddenly a problem. Uh, so, uh, but still, overall, this looks really cool. Um, and that with the reviewer request, definitely a huge improvement. Um, not sure whether I would want the entire feature set on every repo by default. So, Tim, could you take us back to the list of oh, sorry, the list of commands again? Yeah. So it was it was close which is it checks if they have permission then it will close it no it's no no it's so they can close issues but they can't close pull requests ah okay it's... all right it's only for issues then i see okay that okay yeah then label the labeling operation daniel's talked to reopen is the inverse of close okay yeah. And and slash reviewer, I, I I would expect universal agreement. Slash reviewer is a great choice. And then transfer. Yeah, you said transfer is relatively low use right now, but it, as more and more repositories choose GitHub issues, this may become more and more of a a thing. And I think I have seen it in Jenkins Infra much more frequently, where a help desk issue may need to be transferred to another repository as the better location for it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what's the what's the next step here, Tim? Is it to Daniel? Do you want more time to review? Do you want more time to consider? How, Tim, how would you like to get those comments? How would you like to, to to see those? I would suggest that I am not the one judge to decide whether this should be installed or not. So please leave me out of this. Okay. <laughs> I'm just one. I'm just one among hundreds. 
Okay, good. I, I'm fine with that as well then. So it seems like the Jenkins Infra, it's a good topic to discuss with Damien and the Infra team because I could see this being helpful in Infra even if it weren't deployed in Jenkins CI. Yeah, I've um, created, created a help desk issue this morning. There's been a bit of discussion on it. Um, Herb's asked a few questions in Jesse and Alex, but yeah. Great, yeah, and, and Daniel in the chat notes, probably a good topic for the developer list. Maybe if it's okay, what I'll do is I could, or Tim, I can give you the link to the video of this so that we can point people to the demo as a starter and say, hey, look here, here's this idea of a thing we think would really help if we had it in, in the Jenkins CI GitHub org. Sure. Okay, great. All right, so dev list it is. Thanks, Tim. Anything else you wanted to show there? uh no not right now i've mostly been working on this and um some of the jira github stuff great all right thank you then next topic that i had was oh it's the the Java 11, Java 17 thing. I'm not sure we particularly need anything there other than, let me share my screen just so that we've got it. Okay, so you should see, oh, and Daniel, you had added CSP compatibility, that one. Daniel, with your permission, I'd like to move that one up and take that one now rather than spending time on Java 11, Java 17, because I think CSP compatibility is more interesting to this group. Okay, sure. As long as the other two topics that you also moved down should not be discussed now. I think this one, I have nothing. And the other, those are just two saying Mark hasn't done what he said he'd do. So, ah, okay. All right. So um, I recently restarted my work on making Jen at least Jenkins core uh, compatible with uh, content security policy for the classic UI. Uh, we still have a lot of inline JavaScript that we need to take care of, but uh, it's going fairly well, as you can see by the 23 pull requests I opened over the weekend. Um, my suggestion and why, why I'm mentioning it in this group is uh, I would propose that at least for Jenkins core, but perhaps plugin maintainers uh, can also adapt that a kind of a standard, if you will, that new JavaScript code or substantially changed JavaScript code uh, should be compatible with CSP. So basically saying, while we're cleaning it up, let's not make a mess over there at the same time. When you say CSP compatible, help those of us like me who are not not skilled in that. Does that mean it needs to not be inline? Is there more to it than that? Um, so it really depends on the rule set that you're applying, but it needs to be. Uh, what what I mean when I say it is, don't be inline. Don't mix uh, jelly variables with obviously inline JS. Uh, have modern style form validation URLs, because those are just inline JS as well. And do not use eval in your code, I think is, are the big ones. Yeah, we'll keep, keep an eye out for it in review. I think the UX themselves aren't doing that, but it does come up in other PRs sometimes. Ah, okay. So Tim, your point is this is this is already relatively common behavior for for the, the large changes from experienced developers. It's more common that someone who's less experienced might make a mark weight submitter might make this mistake of doing one of these things and not realize he was doing that. Yeah, yeah, it's much much more common to be a drive by or someone seeing it someplace and copying it. I see. Okay. To to, to so come from a less experienced, and, and that makes sense, right? I, I copied some code that was seven years old, 
but it works for me and I copied it. And therefore now I've got this thing that violates one of these principles. Okay, good. All right. And that was really it. So um, if you see code like that, maybe request a change. Uh, I think that will benefit us down the road when we're far enough along to actually activate it. And now is, it, is, do you think it's big enough that it's worth putting in the contributing guide? As a, as a, pardon? The style, so in the contributing page of Jenkins core, that no right. new code should use inline, inline um, JavaScript in the eval. Right, so um, that is something that I plan to do next. Um, and I hope uh, other core maintainers see this, uh, agree there. Um, just like I phrased it at the, at the beginning, mm -hmm. new or substantially altered JavaScript code, obviously, if you intend it to fix uh, formatting, it's not your code, but uh, anything uh, more than that should probably be adapted. And now it's we're still not far enough along to put it in as a as a lint check. Is it even feasible to do these things as some sort of lint check or not really? Um, Core itself isn't uh, ready yet, okay. but what what we could consider in the future is having st stuff like um, the plugin injected tests or just test cases in core um, that visit some pages in Jenkins and look for CSP violations. So that's definitely doable, um, well, mo most likely doable um, to not accidentally reintroduce something like that. But there are still tons of pages left. So most of the UI sort of is fairly clean after my recent pull requests, at least including the open ones, but it's still a uh, way to go. You could even add it now or soon, which just ignores any that you haven't got to yet as well. So the, the fun thing about that is it's really difficult to ignore stuff that's dynamically generated JavaScript because you don't have a checksum. You barely have reliable substrings. And so, yeah, that's, that's still quite annoying. I mean, the ignore jelly files that you know to have issues but because the test fails. So whatever test that you would write, is there a reason that you wouldn't write it now to I stop mean, it being introduced in new places? Every side panel of every job page that has the build button has the problem. And I think it's also in the context menu of the job. So this is where we're currently at. So we're not there yet. Mm. Okay, so not yet ready for widespread sanity safety checks kind of thing. We we've got to get through this initial debt repayment before we can before we can turn something like that on. Right. And especially the build button is a painful one because of the context menu, which also made me think think of the context menu uh, when I brought up the dividing line on the plugin manager UI in the earlier topic. Because I thought I had a fix and then I saw where where it's being displayed on the Jenkins UI somewhere completely different and then I didn't have a fix anymore. Excellent, thank you. That, I apologize, but I've actually run out of time here. I would propose that we call an end for today. We've hit our hour and I need to, to be prompt to my next meeting. Any hot topics, other hot topics that need to be in in this last moment before we end? We're running, I'm I'm currently doing an audit of accessibility in CI. Oh, okay, great. So there may be some, not knowing what that bullet point. <laughs> so Christina, do, do you be. read? Do you read German language? Because we've got this accessibility assessment that was done for Jenkins that was done in German language. Would it help you? Why not? Sure. Okay. So Mark sees, and they were willing to share was it. That, so was that for, I assume it's for the open source. Like yes, it was done for Jenkins. Yeah. yeah so it was done for Jenkins. Sure. I used to run audit in a previous life. So I'm looking forward to tackling CI, but since there's not much of 
the line gets pretty nebulous. I'm sure there'll be some crossover into. Different All right. Stuff. We'll see how that goes. So I'd propose to end for today. I will post the recording, I hope later today or potentially it'll be tomorrow. Today's a little busy. Thanks everybody. Have a good day.